works. Testing, testing, is it on? Yeah, 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 okay.
Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. Good morning, everybody. Wow, it's a, a little bit of a lighter crowd. If you'd like to uh, cuddle up with each other, you can move a little closer, although if you're comfortable with the distance, this is not really a cuddling season, is it? Um, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and get started. And as you know, sometimes we have people that, that trickle in, but I welcome you to worship and I welcome you online. Those of you who are at your home worship spaces, you are welcome. As a part of our worshiping family together, those of you who are joining uh, down the road by YouTube, because we do post our worship services on our YouTube channel, we're glad that you've joined us for worship as well. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made, and we indeed rejoice and are glad in it. The gardens are just soaking up this nourishment, and I'm understanding that at least my last check on the weather forecast, it's going, the, the clouds are going to part, and we're going to have sun and it's going to be a beautiful day if you uh if it is part of uh your custom at home in your worship space to join us in the lighting of the christ candle to start our worship I invite you to find that candle and uh and something to light it with and um in just a moment we'll we'll uh say a prayer together and light the christ candle to begin our worship very very quickly and i'll say this again for those who are not yet with us in this space or with us online Next Sunday is our second joint worship service with our sister Presbyterian churches in the county. Next week, it is at 1030. It is at the uh, center in Adrian on 223, and it is hosted by the Adrian and Cadmus congregations. They share a pastor, Adrian and Cadmus, and Marie Kidder, and, they, and she just had um, surgery recently, but uh, so I don't know if she'll be preaching or if her husband will be preaching. They're both pastors. They're both great. Um, and uh, so that's next Sunday. Just like before, you're, we are all asked to bring a chair. We're asked to bring a dish to pass. And um, we are asked to bring our own serving ware. So, you know, your utensils and plates. And um, last time it was so much fun. And it was a beautiful day. And anyway, if you are wondering where that is, the address for the center is in our newsletter, and you can also Google it, look online. 1030 is when that starts next Sunday. Please join me in prayer as we light the Christ candle. On this day that the clouds overshadow us, O Christ, we know still you are the light of the world, still you shine. You shine through the clouds. The clouds remind us of your ever presence with us. Uh, as, uh, as God spoke and moved through the clouds with the Israelite people, so you are indeed with the clouds and the sun. And so we pray in this day, let your light shine into our hearts. Let your light shine into our homes. Let your light shine into our church, into our nation, into our world, we pray. Amen.
Would you join me in the call to worship? Come, all who are weary of wealth, of, wealth, of, of poverty, poverty, of power, power of, struggle, of struggle, of struggle, of division. Come, all who are heavy laden with, with too much, much with, with too little, little with, with anxiety, anxiety with, with fear, fear, with anger. anger. Come, all who have hope for liberation, for peace, for freedom. freedom. For the, the kingdom. kingdom. Hear these words. See, See I am making, making all things, things new. Let's stand and sing together hymn number 41, O Worship the King, All Glorious Above. I invite you to please be seated. And friends, this is the time we gather our hearts together around the baptismal bowl. We share those things that weigh heavily on our hearts, those things that uh, are light on our hearts, our concerns, our joys with each other as we ask for prayer from and with each other. So um, I invite you, if you have a prayer request, Penny is here, she can grab a microphone. She has it already. So just raise your hand and speak right into the microphone, introduce yourself and let us know what you want to share. Schmidt, and I have a uh, joy. Light on my heart is that we're going to be sending Francisco and Tide off in two weeks. And um, so we wish them well. We thank them. We wish them well on their journey. And we sign up for um, the breakfast that we're going to have at 10 o'clock after church 
in two weeks. So the sign ups in the hallway. Thank you. Thank you. And you have another joy to share, don't you? Didn't you have something fun happening yesterday? I, I looked around to see if I'm the representative. Yes, uh, yesterday, um, Meg and Lloyd Miller's son, Max, married Linda, and Yay. everything went well. So we give thanks and praise again for the gift of marriage and the gift of partnership, life, sharing life together. Um, I, I do want to just say I didn't know that Tide was playing this morning. I'm so grateful. This will be the last time likely that we will see Tide because uh, if she has not gone into labor before the 26th, they are inducing labor on the 26th of August. So um, I am so, so grateful that the two of you are playing for us today. And you sound just so beautiful together. What a memory we'll have from today and from the time you spent with us. Other joys and concerns. I am uh, Kevin Burchett. And on Tuesday, I'm going in for surgery for rotator cuff repair. So next time you see me, I may be in a sling. But I'd like to offer prayers um, for the medical profession. And it's times like these, I'm sure you've all felt, Sometimes we take the medical profession for granted, but my goodness, when we need them, isn't it wonderful? So I'd like to offer prayers for everybody in the room and on, on Zoom in the medical profession, and particularly by surgeons on Tuesday as well. For Kevin and for all that will tend to him as he undergoes surgery this coming week on Tuesday, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I'll let you know also that Scott Adair had hip replacement surgery uh, just last week as well. He's doing well, recovering at home. Hi, uh, George Reasoner. I hope I'm not stepping on Mary Beth's thunder any, but today is our 46th wedding anniversary. Woo! Thank you for celebrating that with us. We celebrate that with you. Wow. Hi, DJ Reinhardt here. On May 5th, I woke up and I was struggling to breathe and I had no voice. I was told it was a um, paralyzed diaphragm on my right side. And so I only had one lung to work with. They told me it would be six months to a year before there would be any recovery, if even then. I woke up July 20th, I could breathe. Mm. So I thank you all for your prayers. Oh, thanks be to you, oh God, for taking care of DJ, for healing her, restoring her strength. In your mercy, hear our prayers. Good morning, Jim Hammond. I never thought I'd have an opportunity to uh, upstage George, but ah. Thursday will be uh, Jan and my 50th. Oh, I, you know, I just, I so love it. I so love it that you guys who have such longevity, longevity in your marriages, share that with our faith family so that you little ones can see that, can see, you know, the gift of sharing life together for years and years and years. We celebrate with you. Other prayer. I'm Carol Lou Weaver and uh, my kids, my uh, son and his family, are traveling. They're uh, going over to Battle Creek to celebrate two birthdays, and I would ask for traveling mercies for them. And I'm also on the 22nd going to have a uh, medical procedure and everything, and I'd ask for your prayers for that. Thank you. For Kira Lou and her upcoming medical procedure and also traveling mercies for her family, we pray to you, O oh God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hi, my name is Brian, and I have joys. As the deacon, my heart is happy with all the collections on the uh, vestibule and in my car for the migrant workers. Uh, my second joy is it's a year today that no surgeries, nothing. My blood pressure is normal. I'm a very happy person. Wow. And soon to be 64, I am fa saying farewell to WCC after 14 years and moving into a Methodist, United Methodist Church as the administrator. And I will become a Tecumseh by work, home, 
parish, the whole works. So four, four and a half years, I'm going to be home. Thanks. We, we lift Brian to you, oh God, as he enters this new transition vocationally. We pray that you indeed have gone ahead already to prepare that new place for him across town in the Methodist Church. May this also be an opportunity for us to grow closer with our brothers and sisters of that congregation as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hi, I'm Kate Winter. First of all, I am so happy to see you here, DJ, and to hear you speak. I've been thinking about you, and it's just a joy to see you. Um, the second thing is, this is a vicarious thing. My grandson, Nathan, just got back from being a camp counselor up in Maine, and he led, as a counselor, he led a small group of campers up Mount Washington in New Hampshire. And that's been something I always wanted to do and never got to do it. So <laughs> it just, I hope he has pictures, but just seeing, just hearing that was just such a joy for me. So, Kate, we celebrate this with you as you see these dreams that you've had. And sometimes we see this lived out in our children, our grandchildren, and we rejoice with them as well. Good morning. I'm Dennis Bowman, and this is my bride, Paula, who will be married to me for 54 years on Wednesday, Whoa. August 17. <laughs> wow. Oh, we Let's keep the numbers you. game rolling here. I don't know if any of you have ever done the, um, I think they called it the, the, the marriage dance or the wedding. I don't remember what they called it, but we went to, I presided over a wedding a couple of weeks ago in Minnesota and, and they started with everyone who was married dancing. And then they said, did you, have you done this where they say, if you've been married less than five years, sit down. If you've been married less than 10 years, sit down. And then, and the couple that was still standing, I don't know, do you remember, was like over 60 years, this beautiful, sweet little couple that was spinning on the dance floor over 60 years they've been married. I love it. We're, we're each one going to a higher level. Do we have more than 54? Anyone? Okay. You get the prize today. You get the prize. Any other prayer, joys and concerns? <clears throat> Joy, Doug Bird. Uh, Last evening, we celebrated, it, they said it was the 55th high school graduation from Ann Arbor High when it was still one high school. And, but it's really the 56th, but it was postponed a year. So uh, we only have to wait four years till the 60th. Over 800 in our class, and I think we were the last class under 1,000, but um, there was a good uh, two or 300 there. And it just, it's amazing to me, the list keeps growing of her classmates that can't make it. Yeah, and yeah. wonderful that, uh, that we could still enjoy each other and uh, nice evening, thank you. Yeah, celebrating the gift of friendship too and through all the years. And isn't it amazing how everyone else aged and you haven't? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Nobody got older. <laughs> My name is Chris Tracy. I just would like to ask for prayers for my father-in-law. His name is Wayne Wright. He is um, undergoing like stress testing and stuff for his heart. He, it's really like pretty bad. So if you could pray for him. Um, the other joy I wanted to share is a lot of you have been married longer than my parents have been alive. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that's a joy in itself. Uh, when you said 54 years, my mom's, my mom's not even 50 years old yet. So like what? Lord, we lift up Wayne to you and the upcoming testing that he will have. Um, oversee that with your grace, with your love and your healing, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Anybody? Um, this is from Marilyn Bahena. I have a very great joy that Miguel has 
his 70th birthday on August 23rd, and we would have all four sons and their families with us next weekend. I thank God for Miguel and each family member. We also are celebrating our 44th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Oh, such celebrations this morning, and we are grateful for your sharing that with us, Marilyn, and happy birthday to Miguel. What a big time to celebrate with family. Andy's uh, family is coming to our house at noon today for a family reunion of sorts uh, out at the farm. So we do this every year at the farm, and, it, and that's why we're also hoping the sun's going to break through. But please join me in prayer. For all that we have on our hearts that has not been spoken and all that has been spoken, Oh God, we give you thanks and praise for inclining your ear, your heart to us, knowing what we're feeling, knowing what we're, what we're holding in our hearts, and you share this and you walk with us, and we give you thanks and praise. And may all that we do and all that we say and the rest of this worship service and time be to your glory, we pray. Amen. So I invite the children who are with us this morning uh, to join me. I just have a little conversation I want to have with you. And then Sam has a project that um, she's got ready for you. How are you guys? Let's just have a little sit. So um, are you guys superheroes? If you were, I would, I, I might, I might, I might disagree. I might disagree that you're superheroes, but if you, if you were, what, what would you want as your superpower? You know, you, you watch these, I don't know if you guys um, read them in comic books or if you watch them in movies, but different superheroes have something special that they can do that's, you know, that makes them a superhero. What, what would you want to be yours? If you could pick anything, what would you want to be yours? Anything, anything that you think, gosh, I wish I could do that better, faster, higher, smarter, anything, anything? I know, I wish I could throw a ball well. I, I wish I could throw a ball. You know, like if I thought about a superpower that I would want to have, I'd want to be able to throw a perfect ball, maybe long, far. What about you guys? What about anybody out here? If you had, if you could do, if you could have a superpower, what would you like it to be? Luck. There you go, right? That's a good one. Luann, what? Healing? I was thinking you were saying eating. I was like, well, that could be a cool superpower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, healing, healing. That's a good one, Tim. Telekinesis, that's, you want to explain what telekinesis is? Moving objects with your mind, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Well, I'm going to just tell you something, and, and Sam's going to work with you about this too. Listen, listen. When we are children of God, which we are, we have been given superpowers. Jana Titus? We've been given superpowers. We've been given the ability to love like Jesus. We've been given the ability to see with eyes of love. We've been given the talent, the gift to lean in and listen to people. Now, we maybe, maybe don't always tune into these gifts. I would say we don't, right? But we have been given this. So when you go back with Sam, I want you guys to spend some time thinking about what, what powers, what superpowers have you guys, have we been given because we're children of God? Will you do that? So let's pray together. Uh, God, as the children work on this, may we also work on this to understand what it is that you have given to us to use for your purposes, for your will as your agents. In this world, we pray. Amen. Nice. 
give them a little bit of time to get settled back uh, at the table and sprawl out a little bit. I think this particular project they're going to work on is going to be a little sprawling. And uh, yeah, if you could close close those doors, David. Yep. Yep. So that they can have their focus, we can have our focus. As we come into a time of confession, this morning's confession is uh, written by John O'Donohue. It is from his book, Bless the Space Between Us. Um, it's been adapted very slightly. It is a blessing that is a may you blessing. And I've kind of framed it as a confession so that it is may I. So that's really the, the only thing I've adapted is to turn it inward as we turn to God in prayer. This is a blessing for a leader. So please join me as we pray together. May I have the grace and wisdom to act kindly, learning to distinguish between what is personal and what is not. May I be hospitable to criticism. May I never put myself at the center of things. May I act not from arrogance, but out of service. May I work on myself, building and refining the ways of the mind. May I learn to cultivate the art of presence in order to engage with those who meet me. When someone fails or disappoints me, may the graciousness with which I engage be their stairway to renewal and refinement. May I have good friends to mirror my blind spots. Lord, hear my prayer to be a good and faithful steward of my privilege in the image of the servant Christ. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you, friends. I invite you to turn toward one another and offer some sign of the peace of Christ to each other down, down the pew, across the room, across the internet. If you look toward George, you can offer peace to those of, those of us who are gathering uh, in their home worship spaces. Peace. Today's scripture takes place in Jerusalem, in the headquarters of Pontius Pilate, who is at the time of the scripture, or at the time of the story, the Roman governor of Judea. I want us to remember that earlier the same night of this story, Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane by a cohort of Roman soldiers and police from the high priests and chief priests. They took Jesus to the high priest Caiaphas for questioning, and from there he was taken in chains to Pontius Pilate. Let's listen as DJ offers this morning's reading from the Gospel of John. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you 
to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, behold the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourself and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he is claimed to be the son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He returned to his headquarters and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who has handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked him, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. Then he handed them over to him to be crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. This summer, we've been exploring questions asked of Jesus. And today's question asked of Jesus was asked by Governor Pontius Pilate. The question, do you not know? that I have power. So there once was a man and a woman and a little dog. One afternoon, they booked a kayak tour in the Outer Banks, North Carolina, on the Alligator River. They outfitted their little dog in a cute little life jacket, and they stood among the other customers waiting for their next instructions. Hi, I'll be your guide today. What's your plan for the dog? The dog is going on the tour, the woman said. I'm sorry, said the guide. Dogs are not allowed in the kayaks. The dog is going on the tour, the man said. I'm sorry, the dog can't go on the tour, the guide said. This is a nature preserve, and we are not allowed to take dogs in the kayaks on the Alligator River. We could lose our license. We could lose our business. The dog is going on the effing tour, the man said louder. And he actually used the real word. Okay, let me call my boss, the guide said. I am not the owner. I am just a kayak tour guide. I will let you talk to the owner. So what followed next was much more offensive language, shouting, spit flying out of the mouths of the man, the woman, maybe even the dog. Waving arms, threats. You don't know who you're dealing with. I will ruin this company on social media. You will never have another customer. I will run you out of business. After the man and the woman and the little dog finally squealed out of the parking lot, after the tour guide collected her cell phone that had been thrown by the man into the woods, 
after she collected herself, she returned to the other customers, two men, each with teenage sons. They'd been standing by and watching in silence. Hi, I'm Courtney. I'll be your tour guide for our tour on the Alligator River today, she said. What about those other customers? Why didn't they say anything? Why didn't they do anything? Nobody took out their cell phones to record this. Nobody called the police. What do you think if you had been there that day, and this is a true story, what do you think you would have done? Why did that man and that woman think they could act like that? Talk like that, treat another human being like that. Have such a blatant disregard for the rules. What makes people think that they are entitled, that they are superior, that they have the authority, the power, the privilege to demand and belittle? from boardrooms to bedrooms, in stores, in playgrounds, parks, airplanes, on film sets, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, in churches, and in the halls of government, power plays. Do you not know I have the power? Pontius Pilate asked Jesus. Pontius Pilate was the Roman governor of Judea. Technically, he was a military commander of several hundred auxiliary troops. These were soldiers that acted more like police. They were stationed to keep the peace. During religious festivals, when crowds of people gathered, which is what this time was, it was the Passover festival, Pilate would travel to Jerusalem. He would stay at the palace of Herod. He was an important man, and he wanted everyone to know it. Historians write that Pontius Pilate was headstrong, greedy, inflexible, and cruel. He was a financial manager of taxes and tributes, and he was given authority by Rome to decide capital punishment cases. Do you not know I have the power to set you free and I have the power to crucify you, he said to Jesus. Gospel writer John stages this scene like a clash of kingdoms. Here's Pilate in the royal palace, sporting his toga and his tunic and vestments fit for a Roman dignitary. Soldiers ready at his beck and call. And here's Jesus. He's been given a purple robe to wear by his accusers and mockers, people who have beaten and spit on him. And he's had a crown placed on his head, a crown of thorns, piercing his skin, blood running down his face and his neck, and he stands alone. These two standing together. Which one held the greater power? Authority is bestowed. It is given. It is delegated. When Pilate governed in Judea, he did so as an agent of Rome. And with authority given to him by Caesar... He kept his job as long as he remained loyal and a friend of Caesar, authority that had been given, authority that could also be taken away. When Caiaphas, who was the high priest, did his duties as high priest of Jerusalem, he did so by Pilate's appointment. So he maintained his position as long as he was a friend of Pilate. 
currying the favor of the rich and powerful. For job security, for resources, position, status, privilege, then and now. Those with authority decide who is honored and who is shamed, and they can and they do manipulate them to their advantage like puppets on a string. That's how power plays. Jesus refused to play. Jesus acted with an authority that he claimed was from a, his father, from above, from God. He was God's agent sent to proclaim and reveal God's kingdom. He was clear about this from the beginning of his ministry. In the wilderness, the tempter took Jesus to a high mountain and he showed him all the earthly kingdoms below. To you, the tempter said, to you, I will give their glory. I will give all their authority for it has been given over to me and I will give it to you, to anyone I please. And I will give it to you if you will worship me. It can be yours. Jesus refused. I worship God and God alone, he said. My kingdom is not from this world, he said. And about his life, Jesus said this. No one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. I have received this from my father. Jesus stood silent before Pontius Pilate, looking like a broken, a beaten, a powerless man. And inside, he was strong and sure, knowing who and whose he was. Over and over again, when we were in Palestine, we heard powerful stories of powerless people. And I mean, when I say powerless, I mean relative to other people in the region. Compared to the ones who decide their judicial cases. Compared to the ones whose military enforces the occupation of their land. Compared to the ones whose construction companies erect roads they're not allowed to drive on, whose civil authorities limit their movements, their job opportunities, and sometimes even access to life-saving resources. These Palestinian Christians told us where their source of strength came from. They said it was from Jesus. They said they read stories like this. They took stories like this into their hearts and they worked out of that space of power that inner strength. With Jesus as their example, they do heroic things like building schools without building permits, like documenting human rights abuses at checkpoints and in night raids to share with the international community, like painting images of resistance and hope, like performing plays that tell personal stories of refugee life, like planting trees where orchards have been burned. They refuse to be enemies. They refuse to exact revenge. They refuse to take up arms. They stand for truth. They stand for justice. And they do it with determination. Because they know who and whose they are. Compelling to our stories about people with privilege who choose to lay it down for the sake of the greater good. Students who graduate with top honors. And they choose to forego higher paying careers and status to work in the nonprofit world. Attorneys who choose to work with asylum seekers at the border. Physicians and nurses who work with doctors without borders or serve uh, for the poor on mercy ships. Educators who return back to a poor neighborhood of their birth, of their childhood in order to raise up the next generation. Civil servants who risk re-election and the safety of their families to tell the truth, so help them God. About Jesus, John wrote this. To all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. I talked earlier with the kids, this is superpowers. The power to become children of God. That's what we are. 
bestowed with grace and honor and privilege and power, God's agents, wherever we find ourselves in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. I'm not the owner, my daughter said. I'm just a kayak tour guide. And yet, you know what? In that moment, she held all the power. She held all the power because you know why? She didn't go on the tour. She didn't take them on the tour. She and those other customers who stood in silence, they weren't powerless. They were refusing to play. And when the man and the woman finally wore themselves out and they drove away without their kayak tour, without a refund, they never posted anything on social media. You see what it was? It was all bluster and no substance. Power plays all around us. Power plays within us. Where do you see it? And where do you feel it? And how do you feel it playing within you? Jesus said, See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them and have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Lord, hear our prayers to be faithful stewards of privilege, the power and authority you bestow upon us, faithful stewards, refusing to play the games of the world's kingdoms, secure in the knowledge of who and whose we are, wherever we are. May we be agents of your character in our silence and in our speech. May we act with integrity, with humility and wisdom in the image of our Savior King, Christ Jesus. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Let's stand and affirm the description of Jesus that's found in the letter from Paul to the Philippian church. Let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even, even death. Therefore, Therefore, God highly exalted him even, even more highly and gave and him the name, the name that is above every other name, so that in the name of given to Jesus, every, every knee should bend in, in heaven, heaven and on earth and, and under the earth, and every tongue should confess yes, that, that Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord, Lord to the glory, to the glory of, God of God the Father. Interesting. You may be seated. Interesting. I am looking at that text in front of me, and I tripped over a couple of places because I memorized this text when I was about 12 years old in the King James Version, and it's still in here. <laughs> That's the power of scripture memorization. Anybody here grow up in a tradition of memorizing scripture? Am I right? It's in here. And I'm so thankful for that. So thankful for that. Uh, at this time, let us draw upon the gratitude that we have in our hearts as we respond to God's grace with the gift of our offerings and the gift of music.
Jim, can you check with Sam? Do they have a gift that they are wanting to bring forward of the project that, they're, that they've been working on? In progress, in progress. <laughs> please, please come forward with the offering and we'll offer a prayer of dedication. And thank you too for those who made the shawls as we dedicate those as well. Please join me in prayer. God, we thank you for the gifts that you bestow upon us. We pray for faithful stewardship of all that you have given us to share from strength, from courage, from character, to the gifts of knitting and crocheting, to the gifts of our work that brings forth financial resources to share. We give you thanks that we have been given the ability to give back to you for the purpose of the growth of your kingdom. And we, we uh, commission this to you, that you may guide us and direct us in the way you see fit for the healing of your world. In Christ we pray, amen. We have a closing song, and it is called At the Name of Jesus. So I invite you to stand. It's hymn number 264 in the hymnal. It's also projected on the screen. After this closing song, I'll give a charge and blessing. We have a postlude, and on the other side of the postlude, we have a very, very short congregational meeting. So I ask you to stand to get ready to sing, and then after we sing, uh, just kind of follow along, and after the postlude, Harvey will be our clerk for our congregational meeting. At the name of Jesus. Please receive the blessing. You are, we are the body of Christ. May we have the heart of Christ, tender for mercy. May we have the eyes of Christ to see a world in need. May we have the feet of Christ to bring good news. May we go in peace and may God go with us. Amen.
we will remember also your living room sessions when we were on Zoom with the two of you in your apartment as you played together and blessed us through that difficult time with the gift of your music. We'll have an opportunity to say thank you more to Francisco, but this is our time to say thank you to you. We are so blessed. Thank you so much. And you know, Tide is going on to teach cello at the college level. She'll be teaching at Lawrence University in the Conservatory of Music. And so she will be training up people to bring such beautiful gifts of music. What a joy, what a privilege you'll have to teach them the passion that you have. Thank you so much. Harvey, if you could come forward. Oh, you are forward. And then um, do you want to give the report from the nominating committee or do you want Pat to come as a representative? Okay, do we have a quorum? We do have a quorum. All right, then let's call this meeting to order. We only have one item on the uh, agenda for the meeting today. And it is a motion uh, from the nominating committee. We do have uh, a vacated term of deacon and we have the nominating committee makes a motion. The nominating committee has put forth the name of Judy Slater to fill the partial term of a vacated position on the board of deacons. The term will begin upon her ordination and installation and will conclude on December of 2024. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Thank you. All in favor? Do we have to do a motion first? He makes a mo he motion. The motion. We, we need a second. Right. Second behind you. All in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Well, I am delighted to have Judy serve in this way. She is so excited. She's so excited. She has such a deacon heart. Is she on Zoom right now? Is she on there? <laughs> oh, there she is. There she is. Yay. Uh, that concludes the business. Uh, could we have a motion to adjourn? Uh, Luann makes a motion. George, you second. All right, let's please join me in prayer. We show our sign of unity in this motion, O oh God, by joining our hearts in prayer, thanking you for the ongoing ministry of this church and those who are willing to serve as servants, humbly, passionately, uh, with the strength that comes from above, caring for one another, leading one another, guiding one another in your word and in your way. And so we pray, lead us on, O oh Christ. Amen. Let's go in peace and serve the Lord.